testing, testing, and testing. We have a wonderful international audience. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better workshop. So thank you all again for very much for coming. Now, it is a workshop. We do want you to work a little bit. And I'm going to ask you to sort of break up into maybe groups of six or eight, something like that, something that looks sort of convenient. So this is our first substance, pseudoephedrine. And pseudoephedrine um, can be extracted from the plant ephedra, which has been used in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. And ephedra is a stimulant. And pseudoephedrine is used in cough linctus. So when you've got a cough and you've got bronchial spasm, you need some relief. Uh, and pseudoephedrine is the chemical that does the work and relieves bronchial spasm. So, pseudoephedrine, as you will note from the hydroxyl group, the top, can be reduced uh, to methamphetamine. Now, if you're short of um, a lira or two, um, this is one approach to multiply your, your money. Because crystal meth has a street value much, much greater than pseudoephedrine. Uh, and as you will realize, it's not a terribly complicated process. So you are a postgraduate student and you're a bit short of money. You've read about this. Someone has told you um, that it is possible to make crystal meth. And you can do it by getting some cough linctus, the raw material. The starting point that you need is in cough linctus. So what might tempt you to try it? So what we would like you to do is just to get into a small group and have an initial discussion. So maybe this group of people here, um, a group, you form a group. We're scientists, we're curious individuals. And you've heard about this. Now, wouldn't you even be tempted just to see whether it's possible to do it? So, would you be tempted to do it? So, would you have that, could you have that discussion in your groups to see whether you would, you would do it? You've read about it, you've, somebody said it. Come on now, you would be curious, would you not? If you ask me about my first reaction, I would say, hmm, maybe. But I will think many times before going to the lab and do it. Uh, because I will just be thinking about uh, the procedure and about what is, the, what is going to happen to the compound that I have synthesized. Maybe someone will take it from the lab or something would happen. So I have, I have to be really careful before my curiosity would take me there and do it. What about in Sri Lanka? With clueless. Sorry? And with clueless. So would, you, would you not try it? I, I, I'm sometimes thinking about, can I? I don't know actually the answer of the question. And I'm also a little bit curious about it also, but I probably I won't prefer it. but. Yeah, about curiosity, yeah. I'm really curious, can I do it or not? I don't know. <laughs> so some of you might be tempted. Most of you seem to be a very conservative lot, really. Oh, not this group. Oh, right. Oh, we have some entrepreneurs amongst us. Great. Um, so if you did make it, if you did make it, would you tell anybody about it? So, I mean, why would you be excited? Because it's quite an achievement. If I made something in the laboratory, it would be quite an achievement. It depends on who I told. Who would you tell and, and who would you not tell? I guess I would share it with colleagues, maybe some students, but not generally. Okay. 
Yeah, well, I mean, if we assume that I've made it out of curiosity, then I would tell someone. You would tell somebody, right. Uh, I have a friend who's the science advisor to Breaking Bad, so I tell her. <laughs> Actually, I, I might uh, tell if, uh, if, if another scientist whom I really trust. Maybe we'll try to find some other application or some other derivatives to, to start something. Uh, most of the biomolecules, sometimes they have more than one target. So maybe we can do something of the molecule that can be good, but some derivatives of something. So I might be discussing this with a friend with pharmaceutical applica uh, background. To not, no, not at all. No, absolutely, that won't be the, the, my, my driving force to tell a person, but that person should be of the same caliber that he won't do that for money. So we'll be just doing it for pure science. If I did it, probably I would call my husband. I made it. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were talking about that. Uh, if, it, uh, if it is about us or, or about this pure, poor student. Uh, yeah, if you are, st maybe I will do that. I don't know. I had money where I were a student. If I think as a student, I would probably be proud of having succeeded in doing something. So that's the point where most likely it will be told to someone. Science is about reproducibility. So you do something a first time and you get a compound, but you want to know that what you've got is real. So if you made it once, would you be tempted to make it again? Just maybe even to prove um, that you got it right the first time round. Maybe you want even just to improve your yield. So if you've made it once, would you be tempted to do it again? Yes. <laughs> yes? Sure. No, like, again, like, if I've made it purely out of curiosity, I wouldn't see the need to make it. But wouldn't you be curious the second time round? No, no. Oh, I wouldn't be either. I wouldn't be either. If I could make it once, it'd be good enough for you. Same thing. I won't do it again. I think again it's a biggest question. If it's just out of curiosity, I'm not a scientist, but a student, why should I try again? If I sell it for money, obviously I want to increase yields and increase my income. Maybe. <laughs> it depends on the yield I get at the first time. <laughs> Right. If it is about money, I, I would repeat, repeat, and repeat to, to, gain, um, to gain money and money. <laughs> now, just re remember the exercise. You're a hard up PhD student. Would you ever consider selling some? I don't know. No, definitely not. I think ethics would. Um be stronger than um, trying to eat something, I, I would think. Ethics. I wouldn't do it either. I pretty much the same reason as Suzanne has. So if I had a strong reason to make it, like I was dying and I didn't have enough money to take care of my family or something, I would make a whole bunch of it, like two kilograms, and then I'd destroy my apparatus and nobody would ever know I did it. No, I, I won't do that. I think the scenario was being a poor student. So obviously, motivation was money. And in this case, if I make more, I can sell more. So from that point of view, I should make more. I might want to consider my future, whether that might destroy my career choice. So from that perspective, maybe not. But might not have done it in the first place then. Personally, I do not prefer, but under some circumstances, my ideas can change. For example, like I said, screw all the other people. <laughs> I need money. Well, I can be in depression, for example, so uh, my ideas can be changed. But during this time, no. <laughs> as far as I can remember, I have never synthesized something really, really poor. So 
in real life I, I wouldn't do that but in this cir circumstances so if I synthesize it I think I would do that if I would be really poor I, I, I haven't got any money to live for so uh, I, I, I think I would do that yes it's real life what I'd like to do is just maybe go around each particular group very quickly to see um, what you would do in relation to each of these particular steps. One person here. Oh yeah, well, uh, I, I think I would consider at least uh, finding the protocol on Google or, or how to make it at least, but I don't think I would, I would uh, do it. We, yeah, we were talking about extreme cases, so let's say that you, uh, you're in you have cancer, you're gonna die, you only have one. So, and you, you're not insured, uh, you want your family to, uh, to uh, have money to con move on, continue on, so you might then, well, you have nothing to lose, so why not then uh, make some quick money and, and uh, help your family uh, move on? In our group, mostly we have decided not to do it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, of course, there were some other ideas as well <laughs> uh, to try, yeah, well, okay, my idea only, uh, I would, I, I said I would try it for only once, but I wouldn't continue doing it just to improve the yield or anything. Um, and, but, and in terms of selling, of course, we all said that we wouldn't even try to sell it. And personally, well, I wouldn't even sell it if I were, were dying or if I would have a cancer, so I wouldn't poison other people, but just because of curiosity and just to confirm the uh, information I got, either from a website or from a book, I would try it just to learn how the process is going, but I wouldn't even try it for a second time. So this is mostly a conservative group, I think. <laughs> All of you are remembering you're not distinguished professors, but you're 19 years old and a graduate student, right? <laughs> I was uh, studying chemistry in California in 1968, and then at that time I was 18. So, and LSD was on the market at that time. And, and, and what I actually did what you were just describing, uh, even though we didn't have Google, we had Vogel, and we had a number of other things. And I looked, I, I, out of curiosity, I looked up the procedure, how to make LSD, which they said was fairly easy. Well, it's not that easy. It's a three-step uh, synthesis, which is fairly involved, and you need quite some apparatus to be able to, to, to make it. And I just left it at there, even though LSD did $10 a tap at that time. Uh, <laughs> Which was quite a bit of money, but no, I, I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested in using it. I was just curious about the procedure, and I was. Uh, I wanted to see if I had the expertise to be able to make it. That 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 basically was the idea, and that's where I left it at. Peers sometimes might move you down that last step. I mean, it might be a mother dying, but or you're about to die, but it might also be peer pressure if you're. <laughs> Um, this here is just a summary chart that I've developed. You're very welcome to use it. There's no copyright on it. Um, but it is a way of taking students through uh, a discussion like this. Uh, and of course, you, you, know, you can all come up with wrong observations, undeclared conflicts of interest, and then take individuals through the steps, curiosity, making it again. Would you talk, tell people about it or suppress it? Why would you do what you particularly choose to do, make it again, sell some, and if you sell a little, why not sell a lot, and so on. Um, but what you can see is that in each of these individual steps, you've clearly gone from something with wrong observations, which is not necessarily intentional, maybe, but probably not, to something that's intentional, and you've clearly gone from an error because a wrong observation you may make, you know, misread some of your writing and say a five was a six or something like that. And it's a simple error. But by the time you're selling, you're doing something criminal. So it's about individual steps or individual choices you make. And each one makes the next a little bit easier. So you may, if you want to use it, very welcome, but it's just an example uh, of a teaching tool uh, that some of you uh, might find useful.
this is one of the examples that we start with. And we start with this partly because we find that for many, many people, chemical weapons, which is one of the goals to raise awareness about chemical weapons, it seems very remote. But most young people can imagine themselves in a situation where this, this challenge, this problem, the dilemmas that come from making crystal meth from pseudoephedrine, in fact, are real. And this is a very large challenge. This is a, a photograph of a ditch in Tijuana with uh, pseudoephedrine cough suppressants being imported from the United States in large quantities and turned into crystal meth. Uh, one can make about $40,000 US from uh, just about a kilogram of starting material. One of the things that this example shows is that there are questions that you have to think about now if you're concerned about the production of crystal meth from pseudoephedrine. And some of you have alluded to these already. You've been talking about where would I find information? Where would I find the recipe? Somebody said I'd go to the chemistry literature. But you can just Google it, right? So how do you find that information? What's access to information like in this transformation? What materials do you need? It might be pseudoephedrine, but you also are going to need some, some uh, equipment in order to convert pseudoephedrine into crystal meth. Where's that going to come from? Is it going to come from a hardware store? Is it the responsibility of the hardware store owner to monitor whether anybody's taking a can and using it to produce crystal meth? So whose responsibility is it here? And understanding and owning ethical responsibility is the kind of thing that you need to do at the individual level or a community level. It's also the kind of thing that you need to think about when it comes to larger global issues.